India's Army Aviation is set to receive another boost in striking power, and the story of how it arrives is as revealing as the delivery itself. In late October, spotters in Leipzig photographed a Ukrainian-operated an 124 Rus Lin loading three AH-64E Apache helicopters in Indian Army camouflage, including an airframe bearing the serial IA-7105. The images confirm that the long-anticipated batch is moving, closing a chapter of delay in a 2020 agreement for six helicopters that slipped roughly a year and a half past its original May-June 2024 target. The decision to ship the Apaches by an 124 rather than ferry them in stages underscores the premium India places on scheduled discipline and platform integrity. Moving multiple airframes inside a single, Climate-controlled fuselage reduces exposure, simplifies paperwork across airspace jurisdictions, and arrives with tools, spares, and mission kits packed beside the helicopters. The Ruslin's front cargo ramp and reinforced floor allow for roll-on loading with rotor systems removed and sensitive optics cocooned, minimizing handling risks that can creep into piecemeal ferry operations. This shipment follows the July 2025 arrival of earlier aircraft from the same lot, serials IA-7101 through IA-7103, suggesting a deliberate cadence, ship a tranche, conduct acceptance and integration, then follow with the remainder once crews, tooling, and stock levels are ready. That approach aligns with the Army's activation of the 451st Helicopter Squadron in Jodhpur, which will absorb the new aircraft and serve as the nucleus for doctrine, training, and maintenance. Locating the unit in Rajasthan positions it close to potential armored maneuver corridors while still within reach of logistics hubs and ranges for weapons calibration. Strategically, the AH-64E fills a well-defined role in India's combined arms framework. Its sensors and data links extend the eyes and reach of ground forces, while its precision anti-armor weapons, 30mm chain gun, and standoff rockets provide options across the contact spectrum, from deliberate ambush against hostile armor to rapid escort of troop-carrying formations. The E variant's digital backbone, engine upgrades, and improved rotor architecture help in hot and high environments, a non-trivial requirement given India's mix of deserts, plains, and elevated plateaus where density altitude challenges flight performance. Operational integration should be smoother because the Indian Air Force already fields 22 AH-64E Apaches from an earlier contract. That familiarity allows the Army to piggyback on an existing ecosystem of simulators, ordnance handling, and depot-level procedures rather than start from zero. At the same time, dual-service ownership is not without friction points, allocation of munitions, prioritization of depot bays, and airspace control measures during joint exercises require meticulous staff work. The upside is a broader base of instructors and maintainers and a richer library of tactics, techniques, and procedures to draw upon. The delayed schedule, while frustrating, may ultimately yield a more robust fielding. The past 18 months have been a stress test for global aerospace logistics, and India's defense procurement has learned hard lessons about buffer stocks, shipping windows, and carrier availability. Using outsized airlift at this stage is a signal that stakeholders are willing to absorb higher transport costs in exchange for predictable delivery milestones. It also illustrates the continued relevance of the IN-124 fleet for defense supply chains that cannot wait on sea lift cycles or assemble aircraft on remote ramps with limited support. From a deterrent standpoint, adding a fresh Apache battery is incremental rather than transformative, but increments matter. Attack helicopters complicate an adversary's planning by threatening armor concentrations, logistics nodes, and low-flying helicopters in contested zones. Their presence encourages dispersion, camouflage, and air defense investments on the other side of the border, all of which slow operational tempo. For India, the real payout is the cumulative effect, more aircraft, better sustainment, tighter integration with surveillance assets, and a trained army squadron that can plug into joint force packages without lengthy spin-up. The next phase after touchdown is methodical and unglamorous, reattaching rotor systems, aligning avionics, running power checks, 
and conducting acceptance flights before the aircraft are signed over to the squadron. Parallel lines of effort, pilot conversion, crew coordination drills, armament testing, and night vision gunnery, will ramp in short order. Expect the unit to emphasize man-on-man -man teaming, leveraging reconnaissance feeds to shorten the sensor-to-shooter loop. That is where the AH-64ES networking pays off, compressing decision time in complex terrain where opportunities are fleeting. Viewed in the round, the Leipzig loadout is more than a photo opportunity. It marks the resumption of a procurement timeline that weathered logistical friction, underscores the utility of strategic airlift for sensitive cargo, and nudges India's Army aviation closer to a mature, joint-ready attack helicopter capability. The N-124's cargo door will close, the long leg east will begin, and, after the tie-down straps come off in India, the 451st will take on the slow, steady work of turning fresh airframes into credible combat power. That, ultimately, is the measure that matters.